Hello guys this video is presented by SM Therapy in this video I am going talk about NVIDIA new GPU that is Voltar. The NVIDIA Voltar graphics architecture is the next big thing. Coming out of the green team's GPU skunk works. It's the silicon successor to the Pascal. Generation of graphics cards, recently rounded off by the GTX 1080T and Titan XP, but can it deliver the same generational performance boost offered by NVIDIA's impressive last-gen graphics silicon? As is NVIDIA Swint the new GPU architecture is taking its name from a famous historical scientist. Alessandro Voltar gave his name to the Volt having been a pioneer of electrical energy and its storage. He was also the discoverer of. But gas fun little science fact for you there. The existence of the Voltar design was first unveiled, at least in theoretical form, at NVIDIA's graphics technology conference. Way back in 2013. It was originally meant to be the GPU silicon which followed directly on from the Maxwell architecture, which made up the GTX 900 series of graphics cards, but a year later up pops the Pascal design used in the most recent 10 series GeForce parts, pushing the prospective Voltar chips further back. But Voltar now seems to be back on track, with devices appearing in drivers and in bay groomers from Chinese websites, so let's delve into what it is what it's going to mean for our gaming PCs and when you can get one. Jammed into your rig. NVIDIA Voltar release date This is probably the most important question of all about the upcoming NVIDIA Voltar architecture, when is it going to be launched? NVIDIA themselves have been relatively tight-lipped about the whole thing, apart from appearing on oft-changing GPU roadmaps, but we are starting to see more wide dimensions of the technology, whether implicit or specific. Early 2018 is still probably the most realistic release date for the consumer version of the Voltar GPU, but that doesn't mean we won't see Voltar-based silicon this year. In February the makers of benchmarking tool AIDA64 found reference to the top-end Voltar GPU, the GV100, in some new NVIDIA drivers. According to a post on video cards the finale Y programmers were trying to unearth some Traces of the then unlaunched GTX 1080T, but instead found reference to the full fat Voltar GPU, the GV100. First sign of the new NVIDIA flagship GPU, codenamed Voltar has appeared on the horizon and its PCI device ID is 1D81 equals graphics device GV100 AIDA64. At AIDA64 official, February 20th. 2017 we are expecting to hear more about Voltar at NVIDIA's graphics technology conference in May and this would seem to suggest engineering versions of the chip are ready to be toyed with. Looks like we'll have a happy gen sun on stage. Waving around Voltar silicon in just a couple of weeks. But that's the top end. Professional level chip being built for supercomputers like the Summit machine likely to Gain sentience at Oak Ridge in 2018 and do muscle all. The GV104 silicon is probably going to be the consumer facing version of Voltar which makes its way into our graphics cards. And is also I expect what SK Hynix were referring to when they recently announced the new GDDR6 memory standard. When they announced the arrival of GDDR6 Hynix mentioned they were planning to mass produce the product for a client to release high end graphics card. Sick. By early 2018 equipped with high performance GDDR6 DRAMs. I'm not the only one to think. That is a reference to NVIDIA and the release of GDDR6 based Voltar GPUs. AMD's new. High end graphics cards, sporting the Radeon and Vega GPUs, are still set to be released by. The end of June this year making it unlikely Hynix were referring to GDDR6 based versions. Releasing in early 2018. There have though been rumors from Chinese site, MyDrivers.com, claiming NVIDIA are planning to release the GeForce 20 series, widely expected to be the nomenclature used for Voltar cards, in the third quarter of this year. That would mean consumer red Voltar GPUs hitting the shelves by September this year, which would be a pretty speedy turnaround if they're only starting to talk about the full fat professional GV100 core in May. NVIDIA Voltar specs there have been many figures thrown around as to just what transistor lithography NVIDIA will be jamming into their next-gen Voltar graphics 
cards, with the latest being a return to the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, TSMC, for the manufacturing of 12 nm volt RGPUs, having previously dallied with Samsung for their 14 nm GP107 silicon. Originally Volt R was supposed to be built using TSMC's new 10 nm process, but the pace of transistor shrinkage has become rather laggardly in recent years. Other rumors had Nvidia sticking with TSMC's existing 16 nm tech in order to be able to stick to their roadmap and get actual Volt R cards on the shelves in 2018. It's now looking like somewhere between the two. TSMC's 10 nm process, unlike Intel's Canon Lake According design, is expected to be more of a stopgap measure between their current process and the almost mythical 7 nm lithography. To put that into perspective, 7 nm is about the height of three Tom Cruises standing on each other's shoulders, but getting down to 10 nm seems to be more of a challenge than maybe even they expected. I'm guessing either the prices prohibitive or the yields too low to offset the performance benefits of a newer design, or a combination of both. TSMC have though announced another stopgap measure which they are calling 12nm. It's apparently based on their existing 16nm design, but with density, performance and energy efficiency improvements. Whether this 12nm node will genuinely be packed with 12nm transistors, or whether it's just going to be clever marketing, is about as clear as thermal paste. The current thinking then is NVIDIA have now taken this updated 12nm design to use in their Volt R GPUs to augment the new architecture's own performance and power improvements with the slight extra performance bump of a shrunken lithography. With it largely being based on the existing 16nm node there shouldn't be any concerns about launching a brand new GPU architecture with a brand new lithography. NVIDIA have been burnt by those technological flames before anyone remember the superheated GTX 480? We also know the top volt RGPUs will be running HBM2 memory, as detailed by Oak Ridge's summit specs. The GV100 is the superstar GPU, sporting both the NVLink interface, instead of C3.0 along with the second gen stacked high bandwidth memory design. It's possible the HBM2 memory will feature in the cut down. C-based GV102 version built for the Quadro crowd and later the Volt R Titan cards. The strategy for the current Pascal generation though has been to run both HBM2 and the NVLink interconnect on the Tesla accelerators with a switch to GDDR5X and C3.0 for the less expensive Quadro and consumer variants. I doubt that will change for Volt R, with the GV102 parts probably sporting the new GDDR6 technology. The first consumer-focused Volt R GPUs, however, will be the GV104 chips, potentially set to go into the GTX 2080 and GTX 2070 cards. These would be built using GDDR6, allowing NVIDIA to pump large capacity, high-performance frame buffers into their cards without the extra expense of HBM2. GDDR6 isn't as pacey as HBM2, but is definitely speedier than GDDR5X, offering a data rate of 16 Gbps as opposed to the former's 14 Gbps top speed. That also means it comes with a chunk of extra bandwidth too. Hynix have stated that with a 394-bit memory bus, the sort of design usually favored by NVIDIA's high-end graphics cards, they are able to offer memory bandwidth of up to 768 GBS. The new Titan XP is using GDDR5X and can only manage 548 GBS with its mighty 12 GB design. In terms of the actual Volt R GPU architecture itself there is not a lot to say. Until we get a little more detail from NVIDIA, hopefully at GTC 2017 in May. What there? Engineers do need to do, however, is to target improved performance from the newer low-level appies, compared with AMD's 4th gen GCN architecture, used in the Polaris cards, NVIDIA's Pascal GPUs are generally off the pace when it comes to Vulkan and DirectX 12 gaming performance. Oh hi, welcome to price speculation corner. Obviously we don't know how NVIDIA are going to price their new cards, much of that will probably come down 
to their relative performance compared with AMD's high-end Vega parts, but we can still make some educated guesses based on video passim. There was though a worrisome section in the MyDrivers.com piece about a rumored accelerated release for Volta. In it they suggest the GeForce 20 series of products will see replanning of the prices and market positions, which will increase the price of single card to enhance profits. My understanding of Chinese is pretty woeful, read, non-existent, so I'm relying on Mr. Google Robots. Comprehension skills, so it's possible there's a misunderstanding born of the translation into English. But if true, and the prices of single cards are being adjusted upwards, that would be the second generation in a row where Nvidia have pushed prices skywards. With a 10 series Pascal based cards the GTX 1080 was released at an unprecedented level. Especially when taking the reference founders edition shenanigans into account. If $699 is going to become the de facto standard for Nvidia's high end graphics cards, as shown with the GTX 1090 Fi and GTX 1080 T cards, then these are worrying times. Unless you're AMD and confident you can keep undercutting Nvidia's GPUs with your own upcoming Vega graphics cards. Nvidia Volta performance although we've seen reference to the GV100 Volta GPU and Nvidia's graphics drivers, meaning there must be testing going on right now, they haven't been any intriguing and or apocryphal benchmarks leaking out to whet our appetites. That's probably down to a mixture of intense secrecy on the part of Nvidia's engineering and testing teams and the fact the GV100 is going to be tested on applications which likely bear little relevance to any of the performance benchmarks we might recognize. Obviously, we are expecting increasing gaming performance from Volta, and I've already spoken about the necessity for it to better deal with the low-level appies of Vulkan and IRX 12. But, we should also expect some improved deficiency born both of the slightly shrunken GPU production process as well as the redesigned architecture itself. Given that Volta is the namesake of the Italian gentleman credited with the invention of the battery you'd certainly hope for some improved deficiency. On the notebook side Pascal made great strides forward for the performance of mobile GPUs, and Volta ought to carry the progress even further. When he announced the existence of the Volta code name at GTC 2013 Gen Hassan, Wang explained that I love that name Volta because it would suggest that it will be even more energy efficient. Thank you for watching my video. Stay sharp.